And joining me now as we focus on this Kerala model and what Kerala may well have done right is the woman who is now making all the headlines. K.K. Shailaja, the health minister of uh, Kerala is joining me, also known as Shailaja teacher because she was a teacher before she became a politician. Appreciate your joining us, ma'am. Thank you very much for joining us from Thiruvananthapuram. The Guardian has a big full spread on you. The BBC has interviewed you, The Economist, Wall Street Journal. Everyone is talking about you and the Kerala model. I want to understand, do you feel proud of what the state has achieved in a way? Do you think the job is done or is the battle still far from over the fight against COVID-19? Hey, yeah. Everyone around the globe is listening to everywhere and anywhere whether they can get a solution to contain this uh, serious thing, the novel coronavirus. And everyone are watching thoroughly uh, where, from where we got, uh, get a positive thing to tackle this problem. And that's why uh, they listen to Kerala also. In Kerala, we have framed a very good preparedness and uh, standard operat operation practices. And we are working hard to tackle the problem. And we can say that the first and second phase, it was a success. And we are facing now the third phase, we can say so. And if it become a model, uh, we are very happy to introduce this thing to all of the world, all over the world. But it is not an easy thing, you know. In Kerala also, we are struggling hard to maintain the uh, this uh, flattening of the curve and other thing. And we are trying our best to uh, to reduce the mortality rate and uh, flattening the epidemic curve. You know, uh, ma'am, you said that Kerala is at a stage where uh, you are hoping to flatten the curve. But the worry, of course, is as as you open up in the last week, public transport back, barber shops are open, large numbers of people are now coming in from the Gulf on fly, flights. Does it play on your mind that maybe Kerala has opened too much too soon, that there could be another outbreak that you could be facing in the days and weeks ahead? Yes, this, uh, this is a challenge uh, uh, actually, because we have to balance these two activities. One side we have to contain this uh, virus, other, other part we have to open the lives and livelihoods uh, and we have to work. And the balancing act is, uh, it is not easy, but we are doing that. We are giving strict instructions to people. Uh, first of all, the first thing is to break the chain and uh, to assure that the hand washing and uh, social distance keeping and also wearing masks when they are coming outside. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing is the positive cases or the people who traveled from outside, people who returned from uh, other countries and also from other states. Uh, we insist strict quarantine to them and some uh, some persons we are uh, uh, having the institutional quarantine and the others in home quarantine. Uh, to insist the home quarantine we formed committees in each and every panchayat wards mm -hmm. and with the help of local self-government, uh, the people's representative, ASHA workers and policemen, uh, we are making it sure that uh, the people are uh, obeying quarantine principles, quarantine guidelines, and they are not jumping. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a difficult task, but we are doing that. Uh, creating awareness among people is the very important thing. We have to live with this virus. We cannot uh, close down everything for any, uh, any or every time. Mm -hmm. We have to open this thing. But we have to follow strictly uh, the stringent actions, uh, strict uh, isolations and quarantine. Uh, we have to follow that. Mm -hmm. We are doing that uh, hazardous job here and with the help of people, people-centered method we are implementing and with the help of people, uh, we are sure that uh, we can yield good results. You know, uh, Ms. Shelja, your critics uh, in the opposition are saying that the left government and you are doing a lot of PR work, that uh, in any case Kerala has always had a very strong public health system. You claim you have 2.5 lakh quarantine beds and yet you are asking people to stay at home. So they are saying that this is a lot of PR. You are on the front pages of a lot of international papers and that is largely because of what Kerala has achieved, not what, because of what Shelja has achieved. 
Sardeshaji, I didn't know what they are saying. Did I call you for anything to publish in your, uh, in your media? Uh, I never asked you. You called me and asked something about Kerala. Same way uh, that um, uh, other, uh, all other medias and uh, television medias and uh, newspapers, etc., Guardian. I didn't expect a call from Guardian, but they called me and asked what you are doing in Kerala. I just answered. I never called uh, Guardian or uh, any other uh, world media. Mm -hmm. And what is the PR work? I don't know. I have no, no one here to have PR work. Only me and my office uh, staffs here. You know, whether it is PR or not, at the end of the day, I read these newspapers which are calling you as the woman who has helped conquer Corona. Let's look at the secret. What do you think is the reason for the success of the Kerala government, of the community system, public health system? What is it about Kerala that you think other states can learn from? <laughs> Sir, this is, this is not uh, my, own, my own work. I can't say so. A single person cannot do anything. I am health minister here and I am organizing my department and coordinating my team to get good result. But our uh, chief minister is a brave man, a man of uh, decision, decision making and uh, he is in the forefront. He coordinates all the uh, other department, line departments mm -hmm. and conducting meetings and meetings and meetings and foreseeing what happens to Kerala and what uh, measures we should have to take and uh, in one part we should uh, contain this virus, on the other part uh, we should feed uh, our poor people and uh, uh, we should maintain our uh, everything, uh, everything we should have to do. You know, I, I, let me slip into a break because I want to talk about how you have gone about testing. Kerala's track record on testing in particular is, uh, is really what sets you apart, uh, tracing and testing. We'll take a break. KK Shelja is going to tell us also how she manages her personal life amidst the crisis. What is her advice to other states? Back in a moment. You're watching this Info Corona special and we are focusing on the state where all eyes are on a particular minister. The health minister of Kerala is with us and remember several health ministers are seeking her advice at the moment in the fight against Corona. I want to ask you KK Shelja, Shelja teacher again. What is the model now as you enter lockdown 4? How is it different from the previous model? Do you continue to increase testing because Kerala has been testing aggressively? What, will you follow the same policy of aggressive tracing and testing? We are continuing the same policy that uh, tracing, testing, quarantine and treating. But we are slowly increasing the test. We have to uh, conduct more uh, sentinel surveillance test, some pool test among the uh, health workers and uh, sentinel surveillance test, sometimes a bulk test from uh, some hotspot, that we are increasing. But it is under our guidelines, the previous guidelines itself, but we are containing more sentinel surveillance tests because we want to know whether community spread is happening or not. Another thing is we are, uh, we are testing all the peripheral pneumonia cases. We are eagerly watching whether the peripheral pneumonia cases are increasing. Up to today, uh, it, it doesn't increase. Uh, no new cases of uh, peripheral pneumonia case. No increase in peripheral pneumonia case uh, in the villages or in the uh, cities. But I, I have to ask you this, uh, KK Shelja. I'm told your personal and family life has taken a hit. You're a grandmother and you barely had any time uh, to spend with your granddaughter. I believe you actually met her only uh, after almost three months. For around three months you were out of the house and then you had to go back to Thiruvananthapuram. Has this been a very difficult three months away from your family fighting this uh, war against COVID as health minister? <laughs> Definitely. Uh, as any other family, every family members are like me, I think so. And I also was uh, very unhappy to uh, living away from my uh, granddaughter. She's a cute girl and... Uh, uh, sometimes I feel missing her, but uh, it is my duty. All my family members agree that they are saying, no, no need to come here. You stay uh, at your headquarters and uh, uh, work for this, uh, uh, tackling this virus to save the lives of people. Uh, and uh, they, are, uh, they are very cooperative to me, my husband, my son and uh, my son, uh, daughter-in-law. 
and my little one. Little one I was a little unhappy that uh, her grandma, uh, he is seeing her grandma only in telephone, in uh, uh, WhatsApp or like that. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, physically she cannot touch me. Uh, that is a problem. But uh, but uh, uh, I didn't take it a uh, great problem or uh, difficulty because uh, I am doing my work to my society. Uh, you know, I know, I know, of course, you started your life as a teacher. That's why you're called Shelja teacher. Let me ask you, therefore, one final question. A lot of states have been talking to you. I know the Maharashtra Health Minister had a video conference with you a few days ago. What is that one advice you are giving other states or dare I say tomorrow other countries that you have learned from the experience in Kerala? Yeah, yeah. You see that ours is only a small state in a country, Kerala. In India, we are a small state and uh, we are not one to advise the whole world but a method we following uh, we are uh, enthusiastic in that method and if anyone wants to follow that method definitely they can follow but we have a system here we uh, created a system previously and also we are uh, changing something in the uh, health sector I have one thing to uh, to uh, uh, give their attention uh, to that uh, everyone should uh, work to have a very good public health system and primary health system. People-centered health service in each and every country. That is the answer. That is the only answer to improve our public health system, affordable treatment to affordable uh, health care system to all the poor people. It should be an e uh, equality-centered uh, approach not only for the rich people but also for the poor people we should look at them we should focus on that poor people they should uh, get uh, affordable healthcare system everywhere definitely in the village level in the grassroots level in the doorstep they should get a very good uh, healthcare system we are preparing for that we are doing that and we are improving that system all the world countries should uh, should find out this not mm -hmm. only the insurance uh, or like that uh, uh, they should uh, they should find out uh, that the public health care system should be developed mm -hmm. and the people centered system should be developed and the expenditure in the health care system also should be increased um, our country also should increase our country is spending uh, only one percent of the GDP in health care system it should be increased the 10 or 15 percent uh, should be spent for uh, public health system and all the other countries, not only spending, but also to to build the uh, people-centered, uh, people-friendly uh, public health system in grassroots level. That is the only answer to prevent this kind of deadly, contagious things. That's right. You've spoken well. Dr. Uh, K.K. Shelja, you've given us a sense of why Kerala is perhaps a step ahead of the rest of the country at the moment. Invest in public health system. That's what will keep you a step ahead in this fight. Thank you very much.